body, in our extracellular fluid, in our blood. So are you an advocate of salt ionizers, for example? Do you use one? Yes, yes. What do they do? Well, when you put heat with salt, which is what these do, you know, you can either put a candle in a block of salt or you can have a light inside of a block of salt. These are the two ways I'm familiar with. Right. When you heat salt, you condense the water from the air surrounding it and you're actually ionizing the water. As soon as this happens, you're breaking water into hydrogen and hydroxyl ions. Okay, that's water, an H and an OH, or an H2O. But usually when water breaks down, it breaks down into a hydrogen ion, that would be the positive ion, and OH, which is a negative ion. Is a salt ionizer the same as a salt lamp? Yes. They break water down into its ions, and they release hydrogen and negative ions into the atmosphere. And there's lots of research been done about the importance of having ions in the air that you breathe. That's why we like going to the beach and we like it after it rains, correct? Absolutely. It's because the same thing's happening with the salt on the beach. You know, it's continually ionizing, releasing these ions into the air. There's lots of research been done there. You must breathe ionized air or you'll die. What do you think most of the people in cities breathe? Well, there's an overabundance of positive ions in the air, and once again, it's always about balance. And when you have an overabundance of positive ions, that's been connected with asthma, irritability. So is structured water a way to get more negatively charged ions in our body? Yes, absolutely. It's a way to get all the ions in our body. It makes them available because in order to structure water, you have to break down the unorganized groupings, if you will, of water molecules and reorganize them. That's what happens in the structuring process. You kind of have to break things apart and allow them to come together in this coherent liquid crystalline matrix. And in so doing, you ionize a tiny, tiny amount of water. But some of those ions, the hydrogen and the oxygen, end up then being more available in the water for use. And we need both hydrogen and oxygen. And we need them in a form that the body can take, and that's ions. On page 59 of your book, which I find the most controversial part of the book, you and your associate talk about acidity and alkalinity and acidosis and the alkaline environment. I really would like to talk about this because you and I live in a world now where there are many devices and machines that are being sold that are supposed to alkalize the water, which is supposed to be better for us and supposed to be alkalizing our pH, our body. But I did not know that Jonathan Wright had done a test on a thousand people about the acidity of the stomach and the work that he did relative to this. And I'd like you to talk about it as well as your other research on acidity and the alkaline environment related to water. Let me begin once again by saying life is always about balance. In the beginning, before I got into this deeply, I had this question in my mind about ionized water. Ionized water is where you split the water, like we were talking about before, between its hydrogen and its hydroxyl ions. So you take apart water into its component parts. Water ionizers do this. And then the minerals that are in the water attach to both of these positive and negatively charged ions from water. And so you end up getting an alkaline stream of water, and an acidic stream of water. And a lot of people have recommended that you drink the alkaline water because it's going to neutralize the acid in your body. And it's really not quite that simple. So now with that little bit of background, let me go back and say, in the beginning, in my mind, I kept saying, what's wrong with this? Drinking only one side of the water, the alkaline side. And what's wrong with that is that it's not natural. Nature doesn't give you water like that. It's out of balance. And the deeper we looked at this, and we looked at this from a lot of angles because my co-author, Melanie, is an intuitive. 
And some people will understand that, and some people will maybe not be open to that. But intuitives have some special gifts in what they are capable of seeing. There are a lot of people in the world nowadays that are telling us they can see people's auras and they can see deeper levels of things. Well, Melanie is one of those people who can see. And we watched what happened when people drank this kind of water. We also used methods that will scientifically, if you will, test the body's response to different kinds of water. And ionized water is structured water, but it's not coherent structured water. So when you put an electric field through water, because electricity is all about positive and negative charges, you force the water, which is a polar molecule, to break apart. You force it to ionize. You force it to change its configuration. So electrolyzed or ionized water is structured water, but it's not coherent. It won't maintain that structure for a long period of time. How do we know that? And do we know that for sure? You know, we used one reference in the book to a Japanese study who just said that their testing of the water was that it was unstable. Dr. Hayashi, right? No, this is another work, and I don't remember the reference. Okay. But it was a Japanese work, and they were working with ionized water, and they basically said it's not stable. That was the reference we used. It's hard to know that. I will tell you that we worked with a little clinic at one point in time who had galvanic skin response equipment, otherwise known as electrodermal screening equipment, and we tested the human body through this equipment and basically did our best to determine that the water that was ionized was only on occasion asked for by the body. And we talk about this in the book. There are places for ionized water. It can be therapeutic for short periods of time, but it's not something you want to do for a long period of time. It's like distilled water. Both of these forms of water, distilled water, ionized water, are extremely aggressive. Why is ionized water aggressive, though, to the body? And can I just say that a lot of people who are using these machines, which alkalize the water and ionize the water, will say that because we as human beings have become so acidic that this is a balancing function. You don't agree? It can be used for a short therapeutic time to to improve some balance, but it's not quite the way we think. Okay. Think of it in these terms. Everybody pretty much also knows that if you want to alkalize your body, you drink lemon juice. Right. Is lemon juice acidic or alkaline? Well, it's acidic until you put it in the body. Okay. And there you go. And so putting alkaline water in the body is not necessarily going to neutralize acids. It's just not that simple, okay? The reason that a lemon alkalizes the body is because it has an abundance of what we've always called alkalizing components. The whole world of acid and alkaline is really quite misunderstood. I'm not sure we can go into that deeply, but we're really not measuring minerals and calcium, magnesium, potassium, when we're measuring alkalinity, we're measuring carbonates and bicarbonates. And if you got online, you'd look that alkalinity testing is measuring those components and not the minerals. So uh, let's just say we've been taken down a path and our understanding is not complete. That's very articulate. Do you mind if I read a little bit of page 76 on this to complete what we're talking about? Go for it. Okay. It says alkaline water hinders digestion. Digestion necessitates a hydrogen-rich, acidic condition in the stomach, and the pH of a baby's stomach is far more acidic than the pH of an adult's. This is because hydrogen reserves become depleted with age. 50% of people over the age of 60 are hyperchlorhydric. They cannot produce enough stomach acid. And for these individuals, asking the stomach to produce more hydrochloric acid or HCl following the ingestion of alkaline supplements or alkaline water is problematic. When the stomach is bombarded with alkaline mineral supplements and or heavily alkalized water, it must work overtime to produce hydrochloric acid. Alkaline minerals taken in excess require more hydrogen for the production of hydrochloric acid to further acidify the stomach. This slows digestion, and it results in the removal of hydrogen and water from within the cells. And this is the last part I want to read. Dr. Jonathan Wright has tested thousands of individuals and found that digestive problems are most often associated with under-acidity in the stomach. For hundreds of years, vinegar has been used to aid digestion. Hydrochloric acid supplements are often prescribed today for the same purpose. 
Both methods acidify the stomach and improve digestion. They provide H plus ions.